Lindsay Benko personifies the attributes of a true champion. Throughout her career, she has not only demonstrated her competitive excellence, but continues to motivate and inspire her teammates to achieve the highest levels of athletic accomplishment. Lindsay began her illustrious journey as an age group standout, where she was an All-American and one of Sports Illustrated's faces in the crowd. Over her career, she has continued to enjoy success at every level. Benko is one of the top freestylers competing today. She holds the world record in both the 200 and 400 freestyle short course meters. Lindsay is a seven-time U.S. national champion, five-time NCAA champion, a 21-time All-American, and has won six career Pac-10 titles. In 2000, she joined America's Best and represented the USA at the Olympic Games, winning a gold medal as a member of the victorious 800 freestyle relay. Demonstrating incredible resilience and perseverance, Lindsay bounced back from a career-threatening injury in 2001 to perform some of the best swimming in her career, breaking record after record. Instrumental to Lindsay's success is her coach, Mark Schubert. Mark is a seven-time Olympic coach, eight-time Coach of the Year, and has led USC to three NCAA team titles and 44 individual titles. Now let's meet Lindsay and Mark. Lindsay, I know that goals have been a very big part of your success. Will you talk a little bit about how you approach goals and how they work for you? Well, I've been setting goals since I was six. Um, my very first swim meet, I remember sitting down with my dad. We would set my very first goal, and so he's really the one that taught me how to set goals. I set goals for myself in practice all the time, you know, whether it's a simple goal of just keeping up with the boys or whether it's a more detailed goal of, you know, negative splitting or even pacing my sets and stuff like that. So I think they're very important because it's a way to reward yourself in the end, and it's a way to make swimming fun, and for me, that's what swimming's all about. What happens to you if you don't reach a goal? It's taken me sometimes three or four years before I actually reached a goal that I wanted to reach. You know, you have to find the fine balance between setting a goal that's a little too hard and a goal that's a little too easy. And once you find that balance, you'll be able to reach your goals, and when you reach them, it's, it's a great feeling, and then you just take a step back and set a new one. I know that you've had some challenges and some disappointments. Could you talk about what those disappointments were and how you handled them. Obviously the biggest disappointment for me was the year after the Olympics in 2001 when I went to Japan and ended up breaking my knee. I thought, you know, maybe my career could have been over. I just didn't know what to expect. I had to believe in myself before I could allow myself to act, you know, to succeed. And coming back a month later, winning a national title, going to Goodwill Games and winning a title there, you know, that gave me the belief in myself that I needed that I kind of feel like I lacked in my career. So you can always learn from disappointments. And for me, I think it might have actually turned out to be for the best. Lindsay, I've always been impressed with your dedication to perfection, particularly when it comes to technique. Swimming has changed so much since I started swimming 20 years ago. The ideas that I was taught are not the ideas that I use now. When you go to the Olympics, everybody has the same amount of talent. It's a matter of who's going to work harder and who's going to have the better technique that's going to get your hand on the wall first. And how do you apply what you learn about your technique and what you should change to practice? Well, that's what you have practice for. You know, you have practice to work on your technique, to perfect your stroke, your swimming. You have to practice it in order to make it perfect in a race. The more you practice it, the easier it's going to be when you race. Lindsay, I know you've been a part of some great teams, and in most cases, you've been a captain of those teams. Can you talk a little bit about teamwork and how that's helped your success? I think a lot of people look at swimming as being a non-related team sport. You know, it's an individual-based sport where I look at swimming as being very team-oriented. If I had to be at practice at 5 o'clock in the morning and I had to do it by myself, it's so much easier to do it when you know that your teammates are going to be there. You know, I wouldn't be as successful as I am without a lot of people's help. 
I know there's many days that you spend five hours a day at the pool, but I'm sure you have other interests. What do you do when you get away from the pool? I like to do things that really have nothing to do with swimming. You know, anything that's going to kind of take my mind off of being at the pool. And I think that's definitely one of the reasons that 20 years later I'm still doing it because I don't put too much focus on it. I focus on it when I'm at the pool, when I'm doing my weight training, when I'm doing everything that I need to do to become a better swimmer. But when I'm away from the pool, let's not think about it. So Lindsay, everybody has their favorites. Tell us what your favorites are. Like my favorite color is probably red. Uh, I love to read, so I have many favorite books. Uh, I think they start with Memoirs of a Geisha, going all the way to um, The Invisible Circus, you know, The Alchemist. Um, I love going to the movies. You know, movies is one thing that, that kind of keeps my mind off of swimming. Uh, favorite TV shows include Alias and Friends. Tell us what your favorite music is. <laughs> I listen to lots of different types of music, but before I race, I have this specific kind of music. I like to listen to 80s music. It, it makes me smile, gets me pumped up before I race. <laughs> Lindsay, I know that your views on nutrition and the importance of nutrition in your sport has changed. I think when I made the team in 2000, it was wonderful. I felt very, very fortunate to be there. But being there helped me learn from some of the greatest athletes around. People like Dara Torres, Amy Van Dyke, and Jenny Thompson. You know, from those girls that do everything in their life to be a gold medalist to be an Olympian and I kind of had to take a step back and reevaluate lots of parts of my life but most importantly my nutrition and now I feel like I'm a lot more careful about what I eat and focus more every day on what it takes to be an Olympian. If someone had a concern about their nutrition how would you recommend that they approach it? I think the most important thing is to not deprive yourself of things. I drink coffee, I do, I eat french fries, but I don't eat those every day. You have to be able to balance it, but you also have to be able to give yourself a craving every once in a while. And I think that that kind of makes it a little easier for yourself and for your mind and for your body. So it's important to have fun, even with nutrition. Yes, <laughs> fun in all aspects of life. <laughs> That was a big 50 by Benko, she's a powerful swimmer. This is Lindsay's sprint stroke, six feet kick. She breathes every two strokes. She breathes on the right, because that's her best side to breathe. We're just briefly going to talk about the actual stroke and the technique and what I think about when I'm swimming. Here we're looking at the hands. Now the very first thing that I think about when I swim my freestyle, when my hands get in front of me, is I want to point my fingertips down towards the bottom of the pool. That way my fingertips are always pushing back all the way through my stroke, all the way past my hips. I want to make sure that my elbow is high throughout my stroke. Watch how high my elbow is the entire time through my stroke. Fingertips are pointing down all the way through until I finish. Make sure you want to finish all the way back behind your hips. Face looking down, I'm not looking up. I could probably look my head even down even further towards the bottom of the pool. When I take my breath, I try to keep my shoulder as close to my head as possible so there's no space in between. I'm breathing with one goggle in the water. Watch how I finish my stroke all the way through on both sides in the rotation of my hips even on the side that I'm not breathing on. My hips open up on both sides. Again, I'm trying to stay as close to the top of the surface of the water as I can. I'm trying not to sink down, especially when I take my breath. If you notice on my kick, my kick is very narrow. It's very close to the surface. Here we are looking at the kick and looking how close my kick is together. Looking how I'm using lots of knee bend, but not too much. I'm getting most of my power coming from the bottom part of my leg, and especially for my ankle flexibility. 
My flexibility in my ankles is really important no matter what stroke you're doing, especially in freestyle. I'm getting lots of power from my ankles. Flexibility is really helpful in the freestyle kick just like it is in all kicks. Bingo has the world record, a short course version of this race. This is Lindsay's 400 stroke, two big kick freestyle with alternate breathing. Here we are with a two beat kick, which is what I use most when I practice and in my 400. It's the same kind of technique that was with the six beat kick. And what I want to think about on this is keeping my kick very narrow. I don't want to have a wide kick. I also try to think about getting my heels on top of the water with every kick. I'm going to get a more powerful kick. Still using my ankle flexibility quite a lot, but I still have to position my body so it's again on top of the water. I don't want to be sinking too far down and when you're not kicking as hard sometimes you have a tendency to do that. Lindsay uses a two-beat kick for the 400. She has a higher tempo. Her arms are at a higher stroke rate. Two kicks per cycle. When I use the two-beat kick, my arm tempo is a little bit faster than when I use a six-beat kick because I'm relying a lot more on my arms. So you want to make sure that you don't forget to do all the proper technique even though your arm's moving faster. Fingertips going all the way down, pushing all the way through. When I take my stroke, I'm still keeping my hands all the way, finishing my catch all the way back past my hips. When I take my breath, I'm making sure that I am still flat on top of the water. And when I do a two-beat kick, I breathe to both sides, not just to my right side. I bilateral breathe, and so I want to make sure that I'm still rotating my hips both from side to side. Again, keeping my shoulder as close to my ear as possible. Finishing my stroke, I see my hands are all the way back here by my hips, and I'm